The title of the story is Boond. It's a story about a droplet of water called Boond. She lived way up in the sky along with her grandparents, her parents, her uncles, aunts and many, many cousins. Her home was a cloud. One day, she went to her grandpa, Grandpa Meg, who was a huge cloud and told him, Grandpa, I want to see the entire world. Of course, my child, you will. When the time comes, no, I don't want to wait. I want to see it now. What is the hurry, little one? Boone replied, everybody has seen the world. All my cousins, Shabnam and Chutki and Chintu and Noor and Neer, everybody has seen except me. And they tell such wonderful, wonderful stories of the world. Grandpa Meek smiled and said, Little one, these are only stories. The real truth is quite different. No, I will not uh, take no for an answer. I want to see the world. I want to see the world. She was a pesky little one and would never take no for an answer. Grandpa Meg smiled indulgently and said, Okay, you can see the world, but you won't go alone. You will go with your cousin Shabnam. Shabnam was a drop of water and Boon and Shabnam were cousins. Boon nodded. Now you must be wondering how does a drop accompanied by a droplet go on a world tour? Well, it's quite simple. Grandpa Meg took Shabnam and Boon in his arms and settled above a waterfall. Soon the drop and the droplet fell into the gushing waters and carried away by the stream. Shabnam and Boond happily were swept away. Boond looked around. On both sides she could see lush green trees, beautiful flowers of every hue and color and shape. Lovely, tasty, delicious, delectable fruits hanging from those trees. Creatures of all sizes and shapes were gambling along. Birds of every hue and color, like the flowers, were chirping and singing melodious tunes. Boon was ecstatic. She was thinking, wow! This is even much better than I had imagined. Soon the river was joined by other rivers and they reached a plain. Suddenly, Boon could feel something stinking. She asked Shabna, what is this stench, Didi? Shabna pointed to the riverbed and told Boon, just take a look. Boon looked around. Hundreds and hundreds of men, women and children were bathing, washing vessels and washing clothes. There was complete garbage and litter all around. Boon, tell me, will all not this create a stink? Boon nodded. Soon as they were going in the river, Boon suddenly felt her skin burning and there was some pungent smell. Shabnam Didi, what is this? Why is my skin burning? Do I have fever? Or is there a monster in these waters which is going to come and gobble up all of us? Shabnam gave a wry smile. No, there is no monster, Boon. There are many factories along the river which shed industrial waste which discharge toxic material into the river which kills these creatures all around see that fish coming floating on its back 
its eyes sightless. It is dead. But why did Grandpa make choose this particular river? We could have gone to Ganga. It's so pure and pristine. Shabnam looked at her and said, My dear Boond, this is the river Ganga. Oh my God, but Papa was saying the waters are so natural, so sweet. And look at all this stink. It is the man's greed which has resulted in completely polluting River Ganga and almost all other rivers. I want to see. I want to go away from here and see the beautiful beaches about whom, about which I've heard so much. Shabnam said, okay, I'll take you to your beautiful beach. And they joined another river and another river and another river. And finally, they reached the sea beside which uh, there was a lot of noise and all going around. And that was the beach. Boons, just have a look at your beautiful beach. Shabnam once again looked around and she was shell-shocked. There was such noise, so much of milling crowds and she could see litter everywhere, plastic bottles, bags and uneaten, half-eaten food and junk was strewn all over the place. Is this the clean beach I was told about? Yes. Like I said earlier, these beaches were pure and clean, but man and his greed have spoiled the beaches as well. Boon said, I don't want to stay in this world. Let us go back home. Shabnam said, okay. But how will we do that, Didi? Shabnam said, see, there's a rock there. We'll go and uh, take rest on the rock the rays of the sun will fall on us we will become water vapor and we will evaporate and we will go up Grandpa May will take it in his arms and we will condense and again become a drop and a droplet that is exactly what happened and once Boon was once again settled uh, in her place with Grandpa May for company Grandpa Meg asked her, little one, how did you find the world? Boon said, it is horrible out there, Grandpa. Plants are dying, animals and birds and fish. Everything is getting destroyed. It is terrible. You have to do something. Grandpa Meg thought for some time and then he collected all the clouds together and addressed the human race. What you are doing today is the worst sin possible. You are destroying mother nature and I'm warning you, either you desist immediately or I'm going to teach you a lesson which you will never ever forget. The men, women and children heard everything in silence. But do you think they followed Grandpa Meg? No. They were back to their old ways once again, destroying the environment, spoiling everything, the beaches, the rivers, the trees, the forests, everything. Grandpa Meg lost his temper. He once again collected all the clouds and told them, there should not be any rain till I see. There was no rain for weeks and months. Every water body dried up. The rivers, the lakes, the ponds, even the wells dried up. And the humans started suffering for lack of water. The leader of the humans was a young man called Aryan. He was responsible, he was responsive, he was intelligent. He had a wise head on his young shoulders. He appealed to Grandpa Meg and joined everybody and asked everybody else to join in. He said, Grandpa Meg, we are sorry. We have learned our lesson. We will never ever repeat our actions. We will take care of Mother Nature. 
we will worship and nurture nature and from that day onwards all the human beings stopped their evil ways and started protecting and nurturing nature the flowers started blooming the fruits started blossoming animals and birds were happy all the water bodies were clean and pristine and you know who was the happiest among all the creatures here and up above it was little boon the droplet of water